Hey, what's up? This is the show where I review my whole Steam library. This is number 7 out of 689 and it's the 4th A title out of 39. So, if I want to learn a new skill, be it learning a new language or learning how to code, I like to check if there's a way to gamify whatever it is I'm trying to do. This had me curious about learning to code while gaming, which brings us to today's game. Let me introduce you to the educational, grindy and complex adventure land. This game is supposed to teach you JavaScript in a fantasy RPG MMO setting. You create a character, choose one between six classes, and then you get thrown into the world with other players where all you have is a starting default script and big dreams. Not only is botting allowed, is the whole point of the game. You write code and your character goes and executes that code. Back in the day I bought this for around 10 bucks, but since then they decided to make it open source so you can go and download it right now from GitHub if you so choose. There's a tutorial from the game that walks you through how the basics work, but other than that you're pretty much on your own. There's a Discord server you can join where you could ask questions when you're stuck, but that's really it. There's almost no tutorials for this game, and I'd say this game is pretty niche and with a low user base in general. A lot of the time spent is just idling, letting your character farm for you, while you iterate your code, read up on something, or work on automating a new task. After the initial tutorial, you can do pretty much anything you want. You can farm slimes into infinity, you can run around and explore, and you can start improving on the default script, or start making your own scripts from scratch. There's many different things you can think about automating, so there's always something to do or optimize. When I started playing this again recently, it was in the middle of the night and I was already a little bit tired. Nothing I tried really worked and it was just a ton of info to absorb and process. I got pretty frustrated and stopped for the night. I wasn't sure if I was gonna just skip this game cause nothing worked, but when I came back the next day with a fresh mind, I could see some progress and it was fun when stuff actually did what I wanted it to do. So let's TLDR the default script first and see what it does, then I'll showcase what changes I tried implementing and how that went. This part here makes the character chug a potion, after that he loots anything that's on the ground. This block down here basically says, if you don't have a target, target the nearest monster you can find that gives at least 100 XP and has a maximum attack of 120. Further down there is a block that says, if your target is out of range, walk half the distance and if it's in range, attack. The first task I gave myself was to optimize how potions are used. In the default script a potion is consumed every time whether you are 5 HP below max or 500. I wanted my character to only drink a potion if their HP or mana dropped below 50%. After some fiddling and testing that worked. A difficulty I had was knowing how everything is called. I could for example know the exact steps I want my character to take, but I just don't know how to translate that into correct code. There's an in-game tool for finding pre-built functions in different menus, where you can check properties, names, etc. But firstly, it's just a lot of comb through, and secondly, I didn't even understand some of the pre-built functions, so without any other help I was kinda stuck at some points. As a longer term goal, I wanted to trim the main function down. I wanted to import all the functions I would call in my main script to declutter everything. I had some trouble with this at first, but I got it to work after I understood how to reference different scripts. Here's a side by side comparison of the default script and my script towards the end. I tried thinking about a script to kite monsters, but messing with my characters and the enemy mobs movement was something I was too lazy to read up on, so I started testing how to automatically locate and walk to different NPCs instead. I made a script that walks to the bank and deposits some gold if a certain threshold is met, and also a script that goes and buys potions after you ran out. As I said, this is supposed to be an MMO, so there are some players to encounter. At one point I went over to the next bigger area to start farming there, and there was this AFK player farming bees. He just killed everything in one shot. At that time my character was pretty weak, so I tagged some of the bees and he finished them off for me. Uh, he could have made his script better if he only targeted mobs that haven't been hit yet, or that don't have a different player as their target. That is, if he wanted to prevent people like me stealing his loot. What I haven't mentioned at all so far is that you can not only have one character at a time, you're basically encouraged to multibox. You can start another instance of the game and control up to four characters at one time. This opens up a ton more possibility as well as complexity. I tried setting up a mage, warrior and priest group. The warrior is supposed to tank the monsters, the mage deals damage and the priest does the healing. Classic setup. 
I think that in the time I had, I did some very good progress, but just getting my mage to target the same monster that my warrior targets took me like at least one hour. After that, I made my mage cast a buff on the warrior, which also took a while and wouldn't work correctly at the beginning. The last thing I tried before putting the game down for now was to automate finding my way back to the other character after buying supplies in town. In the end, it kinda worked, but it wasn't really that clean, so make of that what you will. I think you can really spend a lot of time on any of these little projects if you wanted to. There's always a better way to use skills, potions and movement. You can improve the script to target certain enemies better, automatically upgrade and sell your gear, automatically travel from zone to zone after you reach a certain level. You can improve the interactions between your three characters in a group. There's hundreds of hours of content here if that's your thing. So with all that said, what did I like about this game? It's literally free on GitHub. It's still around 10 bucks on Steam though, so I would probably just download it from there. It's an interesting way to play around with coding. I also like that you immediately see the effect of what you do. This instant feedback feels really nice. It's practical and it's more engaging than just reading a book about coding. What did I not like about this game? It can be super frustrating due to not many resource specific to the game available and the small player base. Sometimes you can feel pretty alone. If you have a problem and you don't really understand what the game is trying to tell you, it can kind of suck to, you know, just have to figure it out by yourself. This leads kind of into the next point. The game by itself doesn't really teach you how to code, just gives you a sandbox to try stuff out and see what happens. This might be overwhelming for a 100% complete beginner that has no idea how anything works. Lastly, I had some personal problems with doors. I tried left clicking doors whenever I wanted to enter a building, like any sane person would, but it would only work sometimes for some reason. After around 5 hours I found out that you can right click to enter doors correctly, so uh, yeah. <laughs> Do I recommend it? Yeah. With it being open source, there's no reason not to try it if you have a passing interest in programming at least. Who is this for? If you like optimizing, problem solving and abstracting problems, this might be for you. If you already know JavaScript and don't want to forget everything, this could be a fun way to not get rusty. Maybe gamer comsci students would also like this. If you're interested in programming and gaming at the same time, this is a good way to do just that. You probably should have some basic knowledge about how stuff works or I fear it might be overwhelming. Also probably join the discord so people can help you out over there. If you don't care about programming, then this game is definitely not for you. Also, this is not really a game you sit down with to relax and not think about stuff. I would rather say this is uh, a less boring form of studying. So if you know what you're getting into, it can be a really nice thing. If you enjoyed this week's review, be sure to like and subscribe. I post a new review every Sunday. Good luck.